But what we now want to do is we want to load all four of these files into a database. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this like ultra, ultra simple, okay? Try to at least. We need to use the for each loop. So if you remember from chapter uh, from earlier in chapter four, we talked about the for each and how we can loop through files in a folder. Well, this is perfect. So let's come down here, we drag it, we double click on our for each loop, we define our collection as a for each file, and there's a bug in SSIS 2008, so we've got to move off of it and move back to it to get this down here. Now here's the little gotcha that you have to worry about. You know, it defaults to the same folder we chose, the root, right? But notice right here that it has chosen a different file pattern. We don't want every file in the root of the C drive, do we? No, we only want to find the files that we've downloaded. Now in the case where you have you're uploading every file in the directory because you're not just using the C drive, then it may be fine to use that star dot star pattern. But we want to go with orders 2009 10 question mark question mark dot text. This I'm sorry. The same pattern that we did for the FT for the download, right? So it's the exact same pattern. And we say awesome. Now let's take a variable. We're going to make a new variable. We'll call it file name. And we'll say what this is saying right here. Don't worry so much about the variables. We're going to cover those in the next chapter in detail. But essentially the name of the file will go into this variable. And we need that because we're going to grab a data flow task. And our data flow task is going to have a flat file source. And our flat file source, we're going to make a new connection to our data file. And I'm going to grab one of these files right now. And I'm going to use it as my configuration file. So I'm going to use it to pick up the dummy data, the basically so that when I click on the columns it can show me what the columns are I can choose what the data types are uh, I could say that the order ID for example is assigned integer uh, as is the customer ID and if you don't know what that is you know you can go to this preview you can see what these values are uh, you can deal with some types of conversions here uh, this is a currency DTCY here. And I say OK. And so that becomes my source. And I want to now load that into a SQL Server destination. If I seem to be going fast, it's because I don't care that you know all this data flow task stuff yet. We're going to get to this. Believe me, we're going to talk about data types and conversions and all of that. And it's really, I'm looking at my little list right now. It's only like five to ten videos later in this chapter. So we're, we're definitely going to get there. Uh, but I'm just doing this to show you something. And I'm going to make a new connection to well, pick your database that you want. Uh, I'm going to use the learnitfirst.com database. And I'm going to create a new table. And I'm going to call it orders. And notice that because I said that the types were integer, signed integer, signed integer, and currency when we define the source that it auto detects those as int, int, and money. Okay. And if you wanted to, you could do things like make this the primary key, and this is not going to allow nulls, and neither is this one. You could, of course, have this table pre done, right? That could be done as well. So if you want to look at the code that I've written right there. That's all it is. It's very, very simple. Say OK. My columns will automatically map up because the names are the same. And I don't need to get too fancy here. However, how is it that I tell the flat file that I want to use the file that was just downloaded? 
Okay, now we're getting into what we call dynamic packages. And that's what chapter 5 is all about, using variables, using expressions, doing all of this stuff dynamically, downloading files and do it. So close your eyes. I'm going to do some hard stuff here that's that I'm not really going to explain. Uh, don't don't even look. It's not cool. You don't want to see this. This is bad stuff. Um, really, really stuff that you're going to see in chapter 5 you don't want to see right now. So I'm talking a whole lot, so you're hopefully not paying attention. Um, did I not do this correctly? Oh, okay. thought I double clicked on it there. Um, so, blah, 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 blah. Okay, hopefully my misdirection attempt worked and you didn't get all scared and freaked out. Don't worry about it, right? I'm going to totally show you all this stuff in Chapter 5. You're going to know it cold. Okay? I'm just trying to tie this into a real-world scenario so you can see how we use the FTP task in the real world. Now, coming over here, let's delete our source files. Okay, local. There's your create table syntax in case you, you wanted to take a look at it in SQL. I have saved it here so you can have it. And I'll just take a look. We've already created that, so it's empty, right? So let's do it. Oh, no. Don't want stupid. We're downloading our FTP task right now see if it's there you go you can see I'm hitting right there and right now it's looping through and hey we didn't even have an error that uh, is a rarity uh, here um, but it looped through and it loaded every one of those files so you can see right here when we load this up remember the files uh, file on the 10th had a 0 as the third file on the 11th had a 1 as the third file on the 12th had a 2 and it loaded every file in the folder very cool. I saved this as files 02. Very simple. Um, we're going to go through this in detail. Don't you fret. I know it's probably frustrating for you to sit there and watch me. Well, why is he doing that? And what is validate external metadata? And why did he set that to false? I don't get it. This is He's going too fast. I don't, this guy's terrible. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. But I think there's a structure here. And I think I, I don't want to scare you. At this point, you need to continue with the goal of Chapter 4, which is let's take a tour of what all the different things do. When we get to Chapter 5, there's going to be a set of things that every task can take advantage of called expressions and variables. And then we'll lock in and really get down to that. So I hope you get a good understanding of how the FTP task works. We'll revisit this in Chapter 6 when we start, and Chapter 5 uh, as well, because we're going to have to be downloading files and doing all kinds of things. Now, next up, what I want to show you how to do is working with files and folders using the file system task. So the FTP task is for FTP servers. The file system is for working with network and local. So I'll see you in the next video.